If you're a collodion photographer, you'll quickly notice that shooting in daylight conditions brings a whole host of factors that need consideration. In this video, I'll talk a little bit about light, how and why it varies by time of day, how this fits in with collodion's sensitivity spectrum, how to make in-camera test strips to nail your first exposure, and how do we effectively use ordinary light meters with collodion to avoid chasing exposure times throughout the day? There's a lot to cover, so hang on. First of all, collodion is sensitive in the region between near UV and visible blue-green, and about half of its sensitivity lies in the UV, which is beyond what our eyes can see. This fact will raise its ugly head when we're trying to estimate exposure times. If we can't see UV, how do we know how much of it's there to base our exposure upon? Conversely, collodion is blind to redder colors, which our eyes happen to be pretty good at detecting. Together, this can make judging light levels somewhat problematic, but we'll come back to this in a moment. Let's first look at what a typical light meter sees compared with collodion. In this graphic, I've overlaid a light meter's visible range over collodion's spectral sensitivity profile. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that there's very little overlap between the two, and if you try to use a light meter directly to determine collodion's exposure, you're in for a big surprise. So how do we get around this problem? We do this by making one reasonable assumption and one rule. The reasonable assumption is that for daylight illumination, the UV levels track the visible light levels. That is to say, if the visible light intensity increases by one stop from scene A to scene B, we would expect the UV light levels to do the same. The rule is, use the light meter for collodion photography with daylight illumination only. Knowing this, there are still some occasions when our reasonable assumption breaks down. For example, we all know the quality of daylight changes with time of day. Early morning and late afternoon sunlight appear redder because the blue portion of the light, the light that collodion loves, gets scattered out as it passes through a greater distance of atmosphere as compared to midday sunlight. As a result, collodion exposures will remain consistent for only a few hours surrounding noon, when the sun's rays aren't affected by the morning and evening scattering effects. So if we stick to these rules, here's how we'll use a light meter to our advantage. First, know that the light meter is not a predictive tool for calculating your first exposure, but rather a tool to help document what you already have and compare that against other new lighting situations. With this in mind, the first step is to shoot a properly exposed plate. You can do this by trial and error, intelligent guessing gained through experience, or, my preferred method, shoot a test strip in camera. To make an in-camera test strip, first mark a line across the back of the dark slide when it's fully closed. Then mark another line when it's fully open. Measure the distance between these two lines, divide it into five equally spaced intervals, then draw lines across the dark slide at each point. This will make your test strips neat and uniform. Our goal is to have the exposure of each strip separated from its neighbor by one full stop. To do this, start with the dark slide fully open and expose the entire plate for one time interval. Let's say one second, for example. When that's done, slide the dark slide to the next line and expose for the same time interval, one second. Then slide it into the next line and expose for two time intervals. Slide it in again and expose for four time intervals, and then finally eight time intervals. Close the dark slide completely and process the plate. The total exposure for each strip is twice that of the previous strip, which is equivalent to one stop. If you want to get really fancy, the only remaining trick is to choose the initial time interval so that the middle exposure is somewhere close to the expected exposure of your finished plate. This will give you exposure information both above and below your expected target. Once you've found the proper initial exposure, use your light meter to record the EV value for the scene you just shot. What's an EV, you say? This is short for exposure value, which is just a number on your light meter that represents one-stop increments in light intensity. Record this in your notebook, 
along with the f-stop and exposure time used to make this plate. This is now your baseline exposure. Now, when you move to a new location, meter the scene first and compare the measured EV to your earlier recorded value. The difference between these two readings will be the change in exposure, stops, you need to make for the new exposure. Every time you make a shot, keep recording your current EV. If you're happy with the resulting exposure, this new EV will become your baseline for the next shot. In this way, as the quality of the light changes throughout the day, your EV baseline will track the change in light quality, keeping your exposures more accurate. This is all fine and good, but remember, there will come a time towards the end of the day when light quality changes faster than you can keep up with. This is the time to pack up your gear and call it a day. If you recognize this, you'll avoid the frustrations of chasing exposures for your last few shots of the day. In summary, light meters will not provide direct measurements of UV intensity. Start each shooting session by making a test strip in camera. It'll save you a lot of time and effort trying to zero in on the best exposure. Once you've determined the proper exposure, record the f-stop, exposure time, and EV for the shot using an incident light meter. With each new exposure, record the exposure settings and EV in your notebook. Light quality changes rapidly early in the morning and late in the afternoon. Have fun, and thanks for watching.